Okay, so good day to all of you. So in this video tutorial, I'm going to teach you how to create an activity diagram. So this is another diagram used for object modeling. So before that, so let's define what is an activity diagram. So an activity diagram resembles a horizontal flowchart that shows the activities and events as they occur. So if we're going to create an activity diagram, you should already identify the context or situation where an activity diagram is applicable. So, for this tutorial, I'm going to use the same doc documentation that I have used um, in the data flow diagram. So, my uh, documentation is online enrollment of a new student in a university where I graduated. So, this is again the uh, documentation. So, let's review again and the, uh, allow me to read the contents of the documentation. So, how to enroll online, five easy steps. So, log in to the student portal. So, visit the office of the university register or UR microsite, uh, which is indicated here, and click the sign in to AIMS student portal icon located on the right side of the homepage or copy and paste this URL. And then, next, step number two is we have request for new password. So, click on the request for password link on the home page of the student portal and enter your student number. Check your email for the system-generated password. Use this password when logging in on the student portal. And then, the next step, the third step will be, so the third step is number three. Click the online registration system or ORS link and select courses to enroll. So once logged in, click on the online registration system or ORS and then select the term and select the course, select the courses by clicking the course name. For new students, refer to the recommended courses posted on the student portal or seek advice from your program chair. System automatically displays the assessment of fees once courses are selected. And then our fourth step is pay your fees and upload proof of payment. Pay your fees through your preferred payment facility. Get your copy of the bank validated slip or credit card transaction slip or official receipt. Upload a scanned copy or digital image of the payment slip to complete your enrollment. And then last but not the least, the fifth step is we have print your form 5. Wait for the confirmation of your enrollment you can print your Form 5 as soon as your enrollment is confirmed. Students who pay their fees using the online payment option will receive an automatic confirmation of enrollment. So, this is our documentation. So, since we've already created diagrams based on this documentation, actually, it's easier if you've already identified the steps, important steps or processes. You can use it in our activity diagram. So, since I've already made a data flow diagram uh, level uh, zero for it. So again, let's review our data flow diagram and then we can refer to the steps that we have identified in the DFD and we can use it in the activity diagram. So we have identified eight processes. So process one is open student portal. Process two is request for new password. And then process three, log in to student portal. Process 4 is open online registration system. And then process 5 is select courses. Process 6 is calculate assessment of fees. Process 7 is pay assessment of fees. And last but not the least, process 8 is print form 5. So this is our processes. So we have 8. So we can expect in our activity diagram, we also have 8 steps. Okay, so let's start our diagram. So, we have, okay, so we have activity diagram. Okay, so let's have here, we have start. Okay. 
So, for start, okay, since we, we have identified 8 processes in our DFD, you can expect that we have um, 8 activities for our activity diagram. We can first write the, um, actually the boxes inside will be the outcome. And then the labels for the arrows are the conditions. Okay, so let's draw the... Okay, so the first is open student portal. So you should have a subject. So student opens student portal. So this is our first, okay, first box. And then another step is we have student request for new password. For new password. Okay. Another activity or rather outcome. And then we have three is we have student logs in to student portal. Okay. So actually this is the process tree. We just put um, a subject and then we have we have the open online registration system. So we have student opens online registration system. Okay. So, this is our steps. Okay. Next is we have oh, select courses. So, student selects courses. Okay, next is we have, okay, next is calculate assessment of fees. So, the system calculates assessment of fees. Okay, then next is we have step or process number 7, pay assessment of fees. So, we have student pays assessment of fees. Okay. And then our last step, our eighth step is we have print form 5. So, student prints form 5. Okay, so this is our major activities. Then, you will put arrows so that, of course, they are sequential in order. Okay. Okay, so we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So we have 8 activities. Okay, so we're going to label the arrows for each of the uh, going from one activity to another. So um, imagine for activity diagram. Okay, this is 
imagine the if and then statement. So, this activities here are the then statements or the outcome. So, for arrows, you're going to think of the if. So, that this outcome will happen. So, for student open student portal, why does the student need to open student portal? So, we can put, so, student, okay, student, accesses, okay, student accesses, student portal for the first time portal for the first time for the first time so if we can read if the student accesses student portal for the first time student opens student portal okay so next is we have we have the student requests for new password so that is our then so what is our if so, we can put student, student does not have a password for his or her account. So, if you can read, if student does not have a password for his or her account, then student requests for new password. Okay, so it's logical. And then, uh, next is we have the na, the next step, student log in, uh, logs in to student portal. So, what is our F? So, we can put student... has has already set has already set a new password so again if you can read uh, the if and then if the student has already set a new password then the student logs into the student portal okay then, our next is student opens online registration system. So, why do you want to open the um, online registration system? Because student needs to enroll, needs to enroll, or needs to enroll courses. Okay. So, if student needs to enroll courses, then student opens the online registration system. And then after opening the online registration system is we have student selects courses. So this is our then. So what is our if? If we can remember the documentation that we have read, it is said here that before you select the courses is you have to select the term because in the... In the documentation, select the term and, cor and select courses by clicking the course name. So, okay, if the if student select courses, okay, and rather, uh, this is the then. So, student selects term. Okay, so if the student selects the term, Okay, selects the term. Then, the student select courses. Okay. Okay, we can add student selects the term and course name. Okay, let's add course name. Okay, if the student select, again, if the student selects the term and course name, then the student selects the courses. Okay, so we're finished here. And then the next is, the system calculates assessment of fees. So, what will be the uh, if for this, the, the system calculates assessment of fees? So, we can add, so, the system accepts the courses selected. 
Okay, so we have, again, let's read the if and then. If the system accepts the courses selected, then the system calculates assessment of fees. Okay, so next is we have student pays assessment of fees. So what will be its, its if statement? So student selects preferred payment payment facility because based on the documentation as you can see with our step number four is we have pay your fees through your preferred payment facility so again if student selects preferred payment facility then student pays assessment of fees and then our last step here in our activity diagram is we have student prints form 5 so you can only print form 5 as as uh, as indicated wait for the confirmation of your enrollment so we can put here as so okay the system confirms payment to confirm enrollment. So, you're only be uh, fully enrolled or your enrollment will be confirmed once you've the payment is confirmed by the system. So, if you're going to read, if the system confirms payment to confirm enrollment, then the student prints Form 5. So, this is how activity diagram is done. So, the boxes here are the then. And then the arrows, the sentences um, labeled uh, on the arrows are the if. So, again, if, you're, if you want to review your activity diagram, you can always put, again, if student accesses student portal for the first time, then the student opens a student portal. If the student does not have a password for his or her account, then the student requests for new password. And then, if the student has already set a new password, then the student logs into student portal. Then, if the student needs to enroll courses, then the student opens online registration system. And then, if the student selects the term and course name, and then the student selects courses. And then, if the student, uh, rather, if the system accepts the courses selected, then the system calculates the assessment of fees. Next is, if the student selects preferred payment facility, then the student pays assessment of fees. And last but not the least, if the system confirms payment to confirm enrollment, then the student prints Form 5. So, so this is our activity diagram for the documentation for enrollment of new student uh, online, so in a university. So, again, before you create an activity diagram, you should identify first the context or situation that you can use. Um, it's very lucky if you already done it, uh, the, the context or situation to other diagrams. But if, if you still didn't, um, didn't identify the steps or processes yet, of course, you have to analyze the documentation. So, again, uh, the activity diagram can rely on other diagrams, example, for the data flow diagram, to the processes and then make it as a steps, of course. The only difference is that in the, box, in, in the boxes, uh, this should be in sentences. So, this activity diagram is actually based on the systems analysis and design by Rosenblatt. So, actually, there are also many... Um, a notation or many activity diagrams that have different symbols but then um, they are just the same they are uh, presenting of course the activities and events as they occur so if you do have any questions so please free to comment below and then I hope that you have learned something from this video tutorial so um, thank you very much for listening and then I hope that I'm going to see you again in uh, my other video tutorials. And please don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. So again, thank you very much and good day.